I'm going to saw through your bones! Hello everybody, and welcome back. Now, as you British people may know, just over a week ago, the first British ESA, ESA astronaut Tim Peake launched to the International Space Station aboard a Soyuz spacecraft, and I've tried to recreate one of these using stock parts in Kerbal Space Program. So at the bottom you can see here these Reliant liquid fuel engines, very similar to the RD-107s used on the real Soyuz spacecraft. One engine, four combustion chambers, with two verniers as well to do the thrust vectoring. Um, and up here we've got the second stage, done by those terriers, have a much higher specific impulse in space, so they're much more efficient for forming an orbit. And on the top again, one terrier, and here we have the three stages of the actual Soyuz spacecraft itself. Solar panels on the service module at the bottom there with the battery. This here is the descent module where the astronauts actually sit for takeoff and landing. Um, and it's conical, so it provides lift in the atmosphere. And at the top here, this is meant to be spherical, but that's the closest thing I could find is the orbital module where they actually live while in orbit. And that's got the toilet and all of that sort of thing. So here are our three pilots ready and waiting in their spacecraft. So let's give it a launch and see what happens. So here we are on the launch pad. Now we have a target in space, what I call the Mini ISS. It's very much smaller than the real International Space Station because that would have completely lagged out my computer. Someone, someone has gone to the effort of making a replica of that though. So. You know, if, you, if you've got a powerful enough computer, then you can use that. So we're just warping until it's directly overhead, and then we're going to launch our rocket. So, let's see. We've got those clamps, just like they are on Gagarin's start launch pad in Russia, where Yuri Gagarin set off, and all of the Soyuz spacecraft have been launched since then powering up to full enabling RCS and SAS and our whole spaceship starts wobbling because I didn't find think of a good way to secure it in place so it's a bit wobbly so we are the first two clamps are detached and then we fire the engines and they all ignite at the same time phase one and two and then we detach those, those final clamps and into space we go so we can see we want to start turning over to the right as soon as possible so we can get our horizontal speed up because getting into orbit isn't just about going up you've got to go sideways as well so you can fall and miss the planet so we're going sideways here now I actually went sideways a little bit too much and you can you'll be able to see the aerodynamic drag on the top of the ship actually turn, trying to turn it over but luckily I've done what the Soyuz engineers did and built in a launch escape system, which you should, should see me firing. So that thing on the top there, where I press the abort button, it should fire. And it fairing detaches and it pulls the capsule safely away from the inevitably crashing rocket. Lots of lots of explosions. <laughs> Lovely. So now we can detach our capsule and enable the parachutes and go and land in the sea. Where the Soyuz wasn't designed to land, but that's just where we're coming down. It's an emergency. So here we are. Coming back to land in the sea, you can hear explosions and stuff happening. Here we are. At least our three astronauts are safe. That's all that matters. Let's try that again, shall we? So, here we are, and this time we're speeding it up. Now you can see those little thrust things firing there. Those are the those are the vernier engines which enable it to actually have any control because the Soyuz doesn't have any fins and it doesn't have thrust vectoring like the main, like the space shuttle for example. You can see those massive gimbal angles on the space shuttle main engine that enable it to offset the offset centre of mass. But no, instead we've got these two little mini combustion chambers in addition to the other four, four on the main engine actually, that can be used to push the rocket over. And here we are, our first stage of the RD-107s has burnt out now, and we can detach them. See those little rockets at the top pushing it away from the main rocket so it doesn't damage anything, creating that lovely spirally cross that you know so well 
from Stoy's launches. So we, we continue going up like that, and now we're on, just on the central RD-108, the main stage 2 engines, as I said, these have two, uh, these have four Vernier engines for even greater control, the outer ones just had two. So there we are, we have stage 2 burnout, and now we need to set a manoeuvre, so we can go sideways fast enough to enter orbit. So here we are, just entering the orbit now. Now, there's our fairing gone, and the Soyuz spacecraft is revealed, and there are our stage 3 engines ready to fire again another group with four combustion chambers for one engine. So, maximum and enable the thrust. Now I'm going to speed this bit up a lot because this is ten times I think. Just because it takes a long time. You can see the combustion chambers are heating up from yellow to white and blue hot. It's quite a nice feature. Black body radiation. So here we are, we almost completed our orbit. You see those intersects there. I set the space station as the target and there goes our solar panels extending them. Now I just have to do a bunch of maneuvers to make make sure that that closest approach intersect is as close as possible. And it was quite difficult actually because our orbit wasn't completely circular and I actually left a little bit late. The spacecraft had already the space station had already gone too far. So I had to do several maneuvers, make sure I didn't go back into the atmosphere, because that wouldn't have been good. But in the end, I eventually got to within about two kilometers of the other spacecraft, the space station, and then we can prepare for docking. Now, of course, this sort of if this was in real life, this would have all been pre-planned, so you can see that little green indicator there. Those are our that's our space station. Here we are, 1.8 kilometers, and now I need to slow down. <laughs> and I've missed my opportunity. I've overshot it a little bit. It takes a long time to turn using the reaction control system on the Soyuz. Nevertheless, we slow down so not to miss our target completely. There goes our engines. This is back in normal time acceleration now. This would have all been pre-planned much better if this was a real mission. <laughs> I'm just winging it, really. Although, come to think of it, when this particular mission came in, the automatic docking system failed, so the commander had to pilot it in, pilot it in manually, which was exciting. <laughs> but he's had much more training in docking than I have done. This was something like my third or fourth attempt at docking. So as you saw, we separated our main space, our main stage. <laughs> what am I talking about? We separated the Soyuz spacecraft itself, the main thing, and now we're coming in for a docking. See that red indicator is where we are, and then the, the pink one and the yellow one are our target and velocity, respectively. So we have to line all of them up, and then turn off the SAS and RCS. And then we will dock. Wait for the magnetic attraction to get us. And there we are, we've docked. So now we can just look around inside our lovely miniature space station. So here's the so what it looks like inside my mock-up Soyuz. It's actually much more similar to an Apollo capsule on that one, but Kubel Space Rover doesn't have anything. This is the labs on the space station, and this is the cupola module. My favourite bit, where you can look down on there through those enormous windows and contemplate how small you are in the universe. So now we can transfer our crew as to just so this mission wasn't completely pointless. So we'll transfer the guy who was in the cupola back into the into the main craft. First into the orbital module of course. And then back into the descent module because the orbital module can't withstand atmospheric re-entry. So that has to be jettisoned before before leaving. So now we can just undock, deactivate the docking port. 
come on. Activate the docking port. I'm dock. There we are, and now we'll use our RCS, the hypergolic fuel, to thrust away from the ISS. Oh, <laughs> a tiny section of the ISS. Well, the Soyuz is now the only way of getting back down. So here we are. We're getting up and back down. The Americans really need to work on their, their replacement for the space shuttle. And here we are. We're just completing our re-entry burn now. Burning in the opposite direction to our orbit to slow us down. So we come back and collide with the planet's surface. We're going to be landing on land. Fold away our solar panels and jettison the orbital module and the service module, so we're just left with this descent module that can survive the intense heating by re-entry with these ram heating flames coming up now. So we decelerate very, very quickly. And now we can activate our parachutes. First of, first of all, a drogue chute to slow us down enough so we can activate our main parachute, which slows us down an awful lot more. So we're approaching the ground here. And the Soyuz also has one last thing to cushion the landing a little bit more. We've got those four little solid mo motors underneath the heat shield that slow it down even more before it touches the ground. And of course I did it a little bit too early. <laughs> so we get another nice explosion that our curls can get out and jump around their weird squeaky sounds as they do. But anyway, I'm glad that Mr. Peak reached his space station um, safely, and hopefully it'll land safely as well. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye. My professional opinion? Haha. <laughs> you should subscribe. <laughs>